journeying on your quest for such a long time. And you can tell you're almost there. You've almost reached the tower. You walk through a forest, past a small stream. Not easily, but you do it. At the top of the tower is a balcony. You scooch out onto it and knock on the doors. No one answers. You knock again. They might be in trouble. enough place. Not a place for a prisoner. You make your way to a chair just because you're so tired and you need to rest. And you call out, is anybody there? Hello? Hello? I'm sure you are. You've had a really long journey. And, I mean, you scaled the wall, so I'm impressed. Why don't we take a few deep breaths? Because I have some kind of bad news to break to you, probably. Yeah. Okay. What we're gonna do is you just come sit in the window seat with me, we'll relax a little bit, and we can get this whole thing straightened out, okay? All right, come on. Comfortable. Do you want to come a little closer? I have some water. I was just finishing my breakfast when you came in. Yeah. Scooch on down here. We'll have a nice talk. And you're free to rest here for a while before you head back home. Okay. That's better. Now we can talk comfortably. And actually, speaking of comfortable, if you don't mind, I'm going to off the hat. Um, technically, we're supposed to put them on when there's a visitor. It's sort of part of the deal. It makes people feel special. Um, but, you know, they're not the, the most practical and they're pretty old-fashioned, so... Actually, before I came here, I don't think I had ever worn one of these things. Have you? No, not your style either. I guess not. <laughs> Alright, I'm just going to set that over here. Okay. Well, why don't you start by telling me why you're here? So, 
you are here to do some rescuing? I thought so. <laughs> and you looked quite surprised to see me. Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell me who you were here to rescue? Was it a prince or a princess? Oh, no wonder you were surprised. Yep. Well, let me actually check the log and I can tell you when they were here. Let's see. I'm just going to look at my laptop. We have a database. We keep pretty good records. Okay. I know the first name. Can you spell the last name for me? Okay, great. Yes. Oh my word. How long have you been on this quest? <laughs> yeah, they left about a month ago. Mm hmm. And I mean, there's been a few since then. Uh, I just got here yesterday, actually, and before me it was, let's see, it was Prince Duncan, Princess Joan, Princess Faraday, and, okay, no, and then, yeah, and then your, your quest. <laughs> so, I'm so sorry, you've arrived a few people too late. Um, and how did you get to know them? Okay, you guys were texting. <laughs> yeah, and then they just kind of disappeared. I understand. It happens, it does. Um, and I'm sure it's nothing that you did. It's just, you know, I mean, you know, right? Now, do you identify as a prince, princess, knight, uh, lady in waiting? Uh huh. So you understand how it is. I mean, there are so many obligations and so many people who want your attention that it can just be exhausting. And sometimes you have to get away from it all. And that is what this place is all about. This place is about getting away from it all. I can put your name on the list if you'd like. You're confused? Okay, so there just aren't many towers in the woods left. There aren't very many hidden places where we can escape to anymore. So this place has been maintained for centuries and centuries, and you just have to get your name on the list, and eventually your turn for Tower Retreat will come up, and you can come here and just get away for, you know, a week or so. Mm-hmm. And everything is kind of taken care of for you. They provide reading material. Uh, you can use the community laptop, of course. Um, oh, right, we have the uh, mirror network here. So, you know, if you need to uh, have a magical answer, you can just check in with your friendly mirror, or if you want to correspond with home the old-fashioned way instead of on your phone. We do try to avoid the old mirror, mirror in my hand, who's the fairest in the land, because that's not what you want to be thinking about when you're here. I saw, you know, from a few miles away that you were coming, so I did the drill, put on the makeup, put on the hat and the dress and everything, but most of the time when you're here, you're just in PJs or, you know, whatever's comfortable for you. You don't have to make yourself look good or think about any of that stuff. I mean, I don't even brush my hair out. Um, so, I'm so sorry to disappoint you, though. <laughs> well, you're taking it really well, thank you. I know Prince Duncan was telling me that, um, he had somebody come on a rescue mission when he was here, and they just did not respond very well. Um, I felt so bad for him because, I mean, Duncan is the nicest guy. Oh, you know him? You know his family? Nice. Yeah, so you know what a good guy he is. But, you know, when we set off on these quests, we tend to be very idealistic, and uh, we're really counting on seeing that face at the top of the tower. 
that's actually how I found out about this, you know, I did the same thing that you're doing now, and I felt so silly when I arrived, and, oh my goodness, I think it was a, a princess Mary that was here? Mm-hmm. No, 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 not Mary Catherine, it was a Mary Elizabeth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the one, that's the one. But she was so nice, and she, you know, just made me feel very relaxed and welcomed, and I got my name on the list, and now I'm here. So, yeah, sometimes our rescue missions don't turn out how we think. There are so few people who truly need rescuing, I suppose. I think sometimes when we set off on these quests, it's really, you know, something that we're doing for ourselves. Do you feel that way at all? I'm sure you saw some of you've been questing for such a long time. I would love to hear all about it. Mmm. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me, an ogre? Wow. Oh, oh yes, no, 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 I know him. He's so nice. <laughs> I'm glad it was him and not his brother. Mm-hmm, for sure. No, oh my gosh, I mean, don't even get me started about his brother. Ridiculous, ridiculous. Lives up to the I shouldn't even say that. I mean, we've gotten to know Ogre so well over the years, and so many of them are just completely lovely, but I know that there are some holdouts to the old ways. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, you are in good hands. Any dragons? <gasps> really? Oh. Yes, yes, oh my gosh. I love her. And it's no wonder you're looking so good. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she got rid of all your badness, right? Oh, I spent some time with her, and I really liked that, too. I felt so refreshed afterward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she says that you're welcome to go back anytime. She really likes humans. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, you've come all this way. Do you need to go to the bathroom or anything? Do you... Mm-hmm. No, you're good. Okay. Well, how about uh, a glass of water? I have some fruit. Uh, I have a little chocolate. Yes? Okay. Great. Let me show you what we have. Okay. One second. Okay, first let me just get you a little bit of water. Uh huh. I have no idea how this place works. It's amazing. I mean, everything. Nice and fresh every morning. Um, it's always just sitting there on the table. I mean, there's no charge. This is just sort of a, if you hear about it and get your name on the list, that is, that would be an interesting quest to find out who owns this place. Absolutely. some pretty, uh, good handholds on there. Almost like it's, uh, meant for climbing. <laughs> so, how about blueberries? We have some delicious blueberries. There you go. <laughs> I'm gonna have one, too. Or maybe a couple. I love blueberries. Oh, please have more. <laughs> They're great. Um, we also have oranges and chocolate. Okay, so they somehow managed to find out exactly the kind of things that you like and have them delivered here. Would you like something?
later just in case you feel like it. Now, I know that I can get Kitty one of these. And I'll have one too. Okay. Really nice. It's the perfect amount for when you just have a small craving. All right, last bite. Mm. Would you like to put your name on the list? I think it's a great idea. Just come here and relax and think of it a whole week away from your duties. Yes, exactly. You can sleep. You can just binge watch TV. Of course, there's Netflix here, Hulu, YouTube, whatever you want to watch on. And you can read. There's an extensive library. And what else is there to do? Oh, uh, there's an exercise studio downstairs. So if you enjoy working out, you can do that. Outside, but there are lots of windows. Mm hmm. Well, you do have to sort of be rescued in the end a little bit. Somebody comes and unlocks the door. No, I know. I think they keep an eye on things, though. If you were ever in any danger, they'd, they would let you out immediately. Don't worry. <laughs> it's perfectly safe. All right, let's get you on the list. Pull up the list. Okay. Now, what's your name? And where are you coming from? <gasps> Ray! I know so many people there. Okay. And no birth date. Okay. Perfect. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, to do it without a parent's permission, you have to be 18 or older. Okay. You're set. All right. Um, let's see what else is on here. How long would you want to stay? The longest is uh, a week, a seven day week. And the shortest is just overnight, or was it? Okay, great. And then the last question is, oh, is there any pet that you would be bringing with you? They have to make special preparation for that if you do. Not sure? All right. Well, oh, last thing, email. So they will email you and let you know where you are in the queue, um, and then as
as soon as possible, you can have this place all to yourself. They'll go over all the regulations with you, like about, you know, wearing the hat, the princess hat, or, you know, the princess crown, or the knight's helmet, or the uh, um, costume of the lady-in-waiting, whatever it is, when you uh, do take in rescuers. <laughs> well, it lets them know that at least they really are in the right place, right? It makes them feel a little special to be greeted the old-fashioned way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. You really must be exhausted. Why don't you just relax? I was actually just reading, and if you'd like, I can read out loud to you. I'm gonna put on my glasses, okay? Princesses can look like anything. All right, let's see. So, of course, in the library here, there are a lot of books based on our fairy tale history. This one's called Brave Red Smart Frog, a new book of old tales by Emily Jenkins, illustrated by Rowan Daniel Eason. I've been really enjoying it. Would you like me to read you one? Choose which story we want to read. Here are the table of contents. There's Snow White, The Frog Prince, Three Wishes, Toads and Pearls, Red Riding Hood, The Three Great Noodles, Hansel and Gretel, and then there's an author's note. Great noodles because you haven't heard of that one. Oh yeah, no, they're all good. Toads and pearls is really good too. All right, let's do the frog prince. Just a moment. person's life, and it makes her feel uncomfortable. She is not a child, but not all the way a grown-up either. This princess, Crystal, was beautiful to most people's way of thinking, except for those people who see beauty in character. In character, she was flawed. She had too many pretty dresses, too many pairs of shoes, she had too many curls in her hair, too many roses in her cheeks, too many chocolates before dinner. Too many ladies in waiting instead of friends. Is there really too much chocolate before dinner? I don't know if that's a thing. I have chocolate at breakfast, so. <laughs> I understand now. I've been in that place before. Too much of everything. It's part of the reason it's nice to come here. Oh, and I wanted to mention, please feel free to go ahead and close your eyes and take a rest if you Even worse, Crystal had too few occupations and too few real conversations. The ladies-in-waiting agreed with whatever she said. They did whatever she wanted to do. Yes, princess, of course, princess, and you know best, princess, all day long. Crystal was fretful and spoiled, spiteful, and desperately lonely. One day, tired of trying on clothes and eating chocolate, Crystal took her favorite golden ball out to the castle grounds. She could have forced some member of the castle staff to play with her, but a game never feels the same when people are paid to play it with you. 
the golden ball had been a gift from her mother when she was young. Her mother was dead, and Crystal missed her dearly. This day, Crystal walked to the top of a hill and tossed the ball high, admiring its golden shine against the blue sky before she got it again. On the third toss, however, she missed her catch, and the ball bounced down the hill at high speed. Crystal chased it. The ball bounced down through the rose garden and then through the vegetable garden at the back of the kitchen castle. Then it kept on downhill, shining merrily until it landed in the well at the base of an herb garden. Out of breath, the princess leaned over and looked at the water. It was very, very deep. She lowered the bucket into the well and raised it again, hoping to retrieve the ball. Only water. She lowered it again and again and again. Only water. Now, in the way of princesses who are not used to solving their own problems, and of girls who have lost their mothers, and of girls who are young enough to play with toys but old enough to think about marriage, Crystal sobbed bitterly. She leaned her cheek against the cold stone of the well. I would give anything if only I could have my ball back. Anything? frog had spoken. It was moss green, and as big as Crystal's head. Its eyes goggled out of its body. Its strange, dry lips were curled in something that might have been a smile. In other words, the frog was of surpassing ugliness to everyone. That is, except for those who see beauty in character. Crystal jumped back in surprise and disgust. Where did you come from? From the well, answered the frog. Did I scare you? No, I think I did. No, you jumped back. You did not scare me, slimy thing. The frog drew itself up. I'm not slimy. Touch me, you'll see. No, try it. I will not. I'm dry. Just use one little finger you don't much care about. Never, not ever. You're lost, said the frog. Why should I care if a dairy maid feels my skin? I'm not a dairy maid. Pardon me, said the frog. A kitchen maid. Sure as sure, I am the princess. <laughs> sure as sure, nothing, said the frog. Here you are, in the herb garden. The bottom of your dress is covered in mud, and your face is puffy. I'm no noodle. A princess is clean and doesn't let her nose run without finding a handkerchief. There was nothing Crystal could say to that. She dug in her pocket, found a handkerchief, and wiped her nose. I lost my ball down the well, she told the frog. I'll give anything to get it back. Anything? Anything? Crystal nodded. Well, what you have to give is considerable if you really are the princess, said the frog. I am the princess. Maybe. She flicked it with her finger. I am, you know it. Only maybe. She flicked him again. You touched me, croaked the frog gleefully. You said never, not ever, and still you touched me. Only to flick you, said Crystal. The frog turned around and hopped along the edge of the well. You don't want me to get your ball for you then, but I do. Crystal followed him. Pretty please, my wordy friend, get it for me. I promise I'll reward you however you please. The frog disappeared down the well in a series of long hops, his suckered feet sticking to the stone. After some time, he reappeared, holding the golden ball in his lipless mouth. You slimed it, said the princess, taking it from him. Then she ran away laughing and never thought of keeping her promise. That night, Crystal had dinner with her father, the king. As usual, they sat at either end of a long table in an enormous hall. They ate from silver plates and drank from golden goblets. Crystal told her father about the ball and the frog, but after that there wasn't much to say. The servants cleared the plates and set down dessert, strawberries, and cake. A rap sounded at the door that opened on the kitchen garden. Crystal went to it, and there sat the frog, round as a donut and ten times the size. He hopped into the dining hall and over to the princess's chair. Lift me up. I'm not lifting you up. You came to dinner uninvited. I did you a kindness. You owed me a reward. You left without paying it, said the frog. Lift me up. Crystal reached down and grabbed the dry but definitely warty frog underneath the belly. She hoisted him up and set him on the table. 
This is the frog who helped me get my ball back, she explained to her father. He's come to claim his reward. If you promised a reward, you must pay it, said the king. What does he want? I want only this, said the frog to Crystal. To eat with you at your table and to sleep with you on your pillow. Uh, oh no. Oh yes. Ask for diamonds. What would I do with diamonds? Then ask for riches. What would I do with riches? Uh, then ask for a pond. A pond with lily pads and a thousand thanks, said Crystal. I do not want a pond, said the frog. I want company. You do not. I do. If he will not take diamonds or riches or a pond, then you must pay the reward he asks, said the king. You just want to slime up my table, said Crystal to the frog. You want to get your horrendous froggy tongue all over my slice of cake. A little cake would be nice, thank you, said the frog. You can put some here in that saucer for me. Then you won't get my frog germs. I still have to look at you, said Crystal. But she cut a generous slice of the cake, put it on the saucer, and added several strawberries. The frog shoved his face into the cake and ate everything with enthusiasm, even the little green leaves of the strawberries. Crystal, who was used to formal table manners, found herself smiling. They talked about stories she'd read and adventures he'd had about cake and music and bird songs. That night, the frog slept on Crystal's pillow. Stop breathing, she said. You're breathing too loud. You stop breathing. No, you. No, you. You smell like a frog she complained. You smell like a human, he complained right back, and your hair takes up too much room on the pillow. At least I'm not bald and warty. I'm good looking to other frogs, said the frog. Other frogs find me very attractive. Why are you even here then? Why would you want to be here with me? It's chilly out, said the frog. There's nobody to talk to. And with that, the two of them went to sleep. The next morning, when Crystal awoke, the frog was nowhere to be found. She spent the day with her ladies in waiting, trying on dresses, being measured for dresses, trying on jewels and slippers and hats. It was, yes, princess, of course, princess, and you know best, princess, all day long. When she arrived in the grand hall for dinner with her father, Crystal looked eagerly for the frog. He was not there. You have paid your debt to him, said the king, so he has gone back to his mud hole. At this, the princess felt heavy and sorry for herself. The meat tasted like cardboard, the roasted apples were sour, the potatoes dry and mealy. She thought of the frog with cake on his bloated, froggy face, and felt that dinner with her father was even duller than a day with her ladies in waiting. She jumped as soon as she heard a knock on the door. And when she saw the frog upon the doorstep, she picked him up gleefully and kissed him on his dry, bald, warty, froggy head. She was so very glad. Other kisses begin them. Crystal's kiss was the first kind, not the second. As soon as her lips touched the frog, he wrenched out of her hands, and before he hit the ground, he was transformed. Before her stood a tall, broad-shouldered man, just a little older than herself, not froggy in the least, though his large, warm eyes looked familiar. It was the frog himself, and Crystal felt both surprised and unsurprised, as if she had known there was magic of this sort at work all along. I want, on I want only this, he said, to eat with you at your table and to sleep with you on your pillow. You just want to slime up my table, said Crystal. You want to get your horrendous froggy tongue all over my slice of cake. I have a normal human tongue now, he said, and while it's true that I'm fond of cake, I'm fonder by far of you. Cheeky, scolded Crystal, but she smiled as she led the way to the table and offered him a chair. Cake was served, the two of them devoured it in big, joyful mouthfuls and then asked for seconds. The young man told Crystal and her father his story. Years ago, he had been prince of a neighboring kingdom. He had angered an ill-tempered witch, and she had punished him by turning him into a frog. A frog he had remained for a good long time, knowing that the only thing that could break his enchantment was true love's kiss, but never dreaming he would find it. You think I love you then, said Crystal. We only met yesterday. I know you love me, said the prince, laughing. If you didn't love me, I would still be a frog. Oh, all right, it's true, but don't gloat about it. It's disgusting, said the princess, putting her hand on his. He stopped her mouth with a second kiss, and after that they married and spent their hours talking and laughing and teasing each other, 
only quarreling now and then to keep the days from seeming dull. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that. Oh, I can tell you're feeling quite sleepy now. Yeah. Well, it's a good time for a morning nap, I would say. Why don't you go ahead and close your eyes? That's all right, just close your eyes. stay a while before you head back. I do like my alone time, but it's also good to have company. <laughs> okay. Let yourself just sink into the